program. I'm Leslie Blumenthal. And I'm Winnie Harris. Tonight's PBS broadcast was originally going to honor the nation's next poet laureate. But after the results of the most recent census, in which 99% of respondents said, what's a laureate? What is poetry? And get off my property or I'll send the dogs after you. This year, our country has decided not to name a poet laureate. Instead, again based on census results, our nation has decided to honor. I can't. We will instead be honoring our first ever influencer laureate, YouTubers, Instagrammers, people famous for being popular online. That's right. Social media influencers affect the purchases and behavior of their followers, and they actually have a lot of power. If we can really delve in with our guests tonight, we might be able to gain a new appreciation for influencing. Now, the Poet Laureate was historically chosen by the Librarian of the United States Congress. But, pursuant to the Philistines who returned the 2020 census, this year, America will be voting for the winner. That's right. Live on our program tonight, you will get to meet 10 of the nation's top influencers, each one a finalist in one of the following categories. Comedy, finance, fitness, gaming, fashion, beauty, politics, lifestyle, podcasting, and cooking. Our categories were chosen by the Pew Research Group with input from the Brookings Institution. Studies have shown that most major influencers can be divided into one of these 10 arenas. Once the categories were established, the accounting firm PricewaterhouseCoopers used top-of-the-line data analytics to find the best performing influencers in each category. And by best performing, we mean the influencers with the most thumbs up clicks. In other words, this was not based on merit. Correct, it was based on popularity. That's right. And the winner will be chosen based on popularity as well. Tonight, you, the viewer, will be voting for the nation's first ever influencer laureate. What an honor that will be. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very honored to be in consideration for Poet Laureate. R.F. Williams? What an honor. But I'm afraid there's been a mistake. We're no longer awarding a Poet Laureate this year. Yes, our producers should have informed you. I'm so sorry. Oh dear, how embarrassing. But since you're here, we would love for our audience to see what an actual artist looks like. Yeah, we would love everyone to know what they're missing by not having a poet laureate. That's a lot of pressure. Before we begin, let's hear a little about RF. RF Williams needs no introduction. She's a Pulitzer Prize winning poet a MacArthur Fellow, and a Rhodes Scholar, basically the opposite of a social media influencer. RF, talk to us about your process. I like to think of writing poetry as my sacred duty. So it's something I'm really precious about. I toss about 99% of what I come up with. The remaining 1% gets polished and rewritten, read aloud and rewritten until it's finally ready. Now that's a process. And you know none of these influencers are doing that. Not when they can fart out a tweet and get a million thumbs these times. You mean likes? I don't know. Is that what the thumb button does? I'm not on social media. Oh dear. I'm afraid we're out of time. Our producers are going to cut the feed if we don't start talking to influencers. Yes, sadly, this is all the time we have for poetry tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, RF. Adieu and farewell. Now, we have many brilliant influencers waiting to tell us what the hell they do. That's right. And Leslie and I have promised to stay professional despite what we may feel about these influencers. We promise to give the best interviews we possibly can, regardless of our personal biases. So, let's rip off the band-aid and start meeting some of these very influential individuals. Our first influencer is a comedian whose song parody videos have received over 100 million views on YouTube. 100 million people watched song parodies? What? 
Leslie's just a little shocked because we don't get quite that many viewers here on PBS. Last week, we got 37 viewers, and that was only because it was sweeps and we played nothing but Antiques Roadshow. Please join us in welcoming comedian Ryan Deeds. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for ha having me. So, you write very popular song parody That's videos right. for YouTube. It also says here that you're a dentist. Yeah, I have my very own practice here in downtown Des Moines. But I also love to make people laugh. And, you know, comedy can sometimes get at the truth in a very surprising way. Well said. I think I'm personally too quick to poo-poo comedy as not being as important as drama, but you're right. Comedy can be used to break down barriers and to speak truth to power. Exactly, like Shakespeare or Mark Twain. Ooh, we love Shakespeare. Mark Twain's my favorite. Which is your favorite history play? Mine's Richard II. I have to admit, this is not how I thought this interview was going to be. <laughs> you probably thought I was going to be some lowest common denominator buffoon. Yes, exactly. Well, I'm pretty excited to hear some of your songs. Ooh, yes. I'll bet they're as inscrutable as my favorite New Yorker cartoons. Well, I'd be happy to sing a couple for you. Here's a little Rihanna. We found plaque on your ride by cuspid. We found plaque on your ride by cuspid. We found plaque on your ride by cuspid. Plaque on your right by cuspid. A bicuspid is, of course, a two. The one with the two small points. I'm not familiar with the song you're parodying, but I see that you work some of your dental knowledge in there. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Here's another one. Hello from your gum line. You must have brushed a thousand times because you have serious gum line recession. We must deal with this periodontal situation. Okay. So we noticed some more dental terms in there. Well, yeah, all of my songs are about dentistry. I'm a dentist. But you said your songs are about what's really important. Yeah, dentistry is what's most important. So I make sure to list as many dental terms as I can in my songs. Look, I know my songs may be hilarious and edgy, I don't think they but are. they're also about what's most important. Dentistry, I love teeth. Look, I think you'll get the hang of it once I sing you this next one. It ain't my fault that your dental work is crap. Gotta blame it on your snacks. Blame it, blame it on your snacks, baby. It ain't my fault that your cavity is whack. And you gotta blame it on your snacks. Had a crunchy snack attack. Yeah, yeah, ow. Yeah, yeah, ow. Yeah, yeah, ow. That didn't clear up anything for me. How about you, Leslie? All your songs? are just dumb dentist things. I think what Leslie is trying to say is that there doesn't seem to be any deeper meaning. You just put dentist terms into regular songs. And it's not even funny. You are nothing like Mark Twain. Well, 81 million likes says otherwise, I don't know. You got 81 million people to click the thumb button you want to hear some Taylor Swift? I think we're out of time. Well, you missed a lot of scorn, 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 but today you'll be reborn, born, 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 born. Prepare to eat some corn, 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 corn. Let's take your braces off, braces off. Thank you so much, Ryan, for giving our ears a root canal. Off to a great start. I don't understand it. There must be good comedians on the internet. How is that girl so popular? Because the world makes no sense, Winnie. Our next influencer is a finance guru. Joey Lofton's YouTube channel has amassed a large audience by sharing stock tips, insider knowledge, and market forecasts. And Joey separates himself from the pack by getting all of those tips 
from his cat. Is that a cat? Is this real? Hey, guys, thanks so much for this great honor. Fluffy and I are, we're humbled. We're truly humbled. Well, you aren't the laureate yet. Everyone still has to vote. <laughs> right. Well, uh, thanks for the nomination. <sighs> just tell us your deal. Right. Well, uh, I had just come out of my third startup flop and I was really trying to get my hands on some liquid. Long story short, I was broke, but uh, that's when I noticed Fluffy here circling her litter box. Not once. Not twice, but thrice, before deciding to go in. What's so special about that? <laughs> well, she's usually a uh, once-around-the-track kind of girl. <laughs> Still not getting the connection. <laughs> well, obviously, she was trying to tell me to stop beating around the box and whip up the courage to go all in on the stock I was looking at. And by closing, I made over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. After that, I started tracking her movements, and turns out Floofers really knows her stuff. Really? You don't think you're reading too much into this? I mean, couldn't it have just been a coincidence? <sighs> I'll admit, I was a bit skeptical myself at first, but uh, thought maybe she needed to stop eating the wet food, or I needed to stop staying up, or. 36 hours at a time. But when she predicted the athleisure craze and the boom in 3D printing, I thought people have got to know about this. And how exactly did she do that? <laughs> uh, she, she yapped up a hairball on my yoga mat and then knocked a rubber band ball off my desk. Those are things cats do all the time. Not my floofers. But couldn't you have easily interpreted that to mean you should sell that stock? <laughs> well, uh, obviously you aren't a regular subscriber or you'd know how absurd you sound. All right, all right. I understand you have a big tip you'd like to give us today. Oh, right, our, uh, our big announcement. <laughs> We're proud to reveal that Fluffer Nutter here has the A1 top of the line, cream of the crop, rad, rad, super dope drop on the next market trend. Which is? Print media. Yeah, get into it. I don't think that's good advice. <sighs> Suit yourself, friend. But Fluffy stepped in her cat bed last night. She hasn't slept in that thing since I bought it for two years ago. She's, she's just been sleeping in the cardboard box it came in. <laughs> but, but obviously she was screaming to me. Invest in newspapers. What if she decides to claw at your leather couch? Then what? Will you sell your Apple stock? No, no, clawing's just clawing. Let's, uh, let's not get crazy. So, litter box habits matter, but clawing doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's good for nails. Okay, this is ridiculous. Does Fluffy even have any credentials? I mean, why should we listen to your cat's advice and not the raccoons that dig up my lawn? Because Fluffy has an honorary degree from Wharton. You went to Penn, too, didn't you, Leslie? And she has a net promoter score of positive 90. Oh! Okay, well, Joey and Fluffy, congratulations on all your success. Good luck in your quest to become our influencer laureate. Hey, thanks, guys. And to all my followers out there, don't forget to tune in with us tomorrow. We'll check in with our laser pointer watch, where we'll see if Fluffy is ready to go all in on Bitcoin. So that guy and his cat got more thumb likes than a real economist. That's ridiculous. How many followers does Ben Bernanke have? America.
Is this what you wanted? You could have honored a genius poet tonight, but instead you're going to end up with a constipated cat. Or a very on-brand singing dentist. Let's keep it moving. Wanna take the next one? People who are bored with their fitness routine will often turn to online fitness influencers for innovative workouts, like goat yoga or karaoke. Our next guest is famous for the way they exploded on both the art and fitness scenes by combining kickboxing and photography to create kickbox photography. Mm -hmm. Katie, who runs the YouTube channel Kicks and Picks, has inspired people all over the country to maintain a healthy lifestyle while capturing unique images to change their perspective on life. Welcome, Katie. It's great to be here, Winnie. Katie, it seems your screen is a bit off center. Do you think you could fix that? Oh, no, Winnie. It's the perfect camera angle to show off my full front kick extension. Well, it looked like your shoulder to me, but I failed finger painting in kindergarten. So what do I know? So tell me, Katie, what made you want to combine kickboxing, which involves continuous jostling, and photography, which demands an element of stillness, and how did you reconcile the two? Well, Winnie, I'll show you. With my two-minute kicks and picks flash challenge, you'll gain a new vantage point on life, while also sculpting killer quads. No, I don't sport. Come on, get up. You'll get your heart rate up and new prints for your gallery wall. Well, I have been a little on my steps for the week. The only equipment you'll need for this series is yourself and an Nikon D3500. Is that a camera? I don't have that. Just use your phone. <sighs> All right. Now, a quick warm up. Stand tall with your right hand up, pointer finger extended. Now, push that button. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's right. Keep it going for five, four, three, two, one. Great warm up. Now, moving into the work, our first combination is going to be jab, jab, flash, jump flash, kick. All right. Now let's add a little more to it. Jab, jab, flash, jump, flash, kick, kick. And keep those feet moving. Jab, jab, flash, jump, flash, kick, kick. Good. Now we're going to move on to the second round. Uppercut, uppercut, flash, jump, flash, kick and check the negative space around you and adjust accordingly, all right? Uppercut, uppercut, flash, jump, flash, kick. Good, now 15 second rest here, but keep those feet in at least a boxer shuffle. Hey, no chimping. Do not take a peek at those picks until the series is complete. Now moving into the final burnout round. Roundhouse, roundhouse, bob and weave, bob and weave, bob and weave. Yes, Winnie, take it down to the floor, get creative. I find that allowing the strenuous activity of kickboxing really gets you out of your head. Now, last time through. Roundhouse, roundhouse, bob and weave, bob and weave, bob and weave. Great workout and great shoot session. If you're looking for something a little longer, I have my 30 minute lens and cleanse series. Now. Let's take a look at those pics. What do you see? The ceiling. I see the ceiling. And how do you feel seeing the ceiling from this angle? A little grossed out. There's a lot of cobwebs. Someone you see? Clean. It's new ideas that inspire action. Well, I guess I did reach my target heart rate for the day, but I don't know who would want any of these photos. 
Why don't we take a look at yours? These turned out lovely. I love the force perspective in this one and the angle of this one. Those are also terrible. No better than mine. I already sold three prints from the series. Oh, four. Well, it's been exhausting, painful, and a little existentially demoralizing, KT. Thanks for everything. Please tell me our next guest is an opera singer, or a physicist, or at least something sedentary. Well, it's sedentary. Our next guest is the top influencer in the category of gaming. Gaming. We could be honoring our country's most gifted poet right now. The person putting words to the human condition. But we're not. Please welcome Ty Boom. Uh, Ty? Hello? Welcome to PBS. Almost there. Got it. Tense game. I see. You're in the middle of a game. During our interview. Gamers got a game, PBS girl. I only sleep three hours a night. 21 hours a day. Gaming. But you're in consideration for the nation's highest honor. Don't you want to make a case for yourself to America? Look, I can do two things at once. I can talk to you. I can eat my blender. I can win this game. <sighs> Ooh, you're going down, you fart-faced noob! Language, this is PBS. And what is Blenner? It's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I only eat one meal a day. Rest of the time, gaming. Sounds exhausting. Oh man, you totally missed the king swap! Your mother never loved you and you'll die alone! <sighs> Ouch, what? Not talking to you. Trash talk. Part of the game. Well, it makes me uncomfortable. Do you want to talk to us about your channel? The philosophy you try to bring to your videos? Mostly. I just play every game I can get my hands on. Then, I win. Say cool things to my opponents while I do it. It's a winning combo. Pretty rich. I see that you release a new video every day. That is a grueling schedule. I guess, but gaming is as gaming does. What the hell does that mean? Gaming is as gaming does? And hey, check out our merch that says gaming is as gaming does in our online store. But that's nonsense. Oh my God, there's an open spot. Hit it, hit it, hit it! Uh. Didn't get into Amherst, and that's why Sam left you! You're a fraud! Okay, this trash talk is surprisingly personal. Do you know your opponent personally? You could say that. Are you playing Solitaire, the card game? I have so many questions. Look. I've burned through all the major sports, sims, and the RPGs, and action games. So I moved into puzzle games and indies and such. Then I just ran out of video games. But I still need content, so I figured, why not play other games? Like IRL games. So I started playing some Uno, Battleship, Hopscotch, Charades. And now finally, it's all up there. Between you and me. Really hope to come out of the new video game soon. But why did you trash talk yourself? It's part of the game. Gaming is as gaming does. Right. Well, thank you for coming on. Also, I hate myself. Hi, boom, everyone. Well, tonight has been exactly what I thought it was going to be. 
we found ourselves interviewing the silliest individuals ever to grace PBS's airwaves. We're presiding over a popularity contest. We might as well be Ryan Seacrest. I cannot be Ryan Seacrest. I'm, I'm Edward R. Murrow. I went to Penn for heaven's sake. I once interviewed Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou. I think they want you to intro the next influencer. It appears our next guest is our lifestyle influencer, Melody Sweezel, star of the very popular unboxing channel, Melody Opens. Thank you for having me. So, you open boxes for a living? Well, it's not quite that simple, Winnie. Of course. Talk to us about what you do. Unboxing is an art. Yes, you're opening up a box and showcasing the product you ordered, but you also need the right hand placement. You need to say interesting facts about the product and the ordering process. You need to do your research. Right. Did you bring a box with you today? Why, yes, I did. I thought I'd give you a little sample of my work in real time. Today, I'm opening up a box from the store Creekwater Landing. My mother loves that store. Everyone's mother does. So if I just, okay, I'm opening up the box. There's a little bit of resistance here. This is well packed. And here we have the first view of actual jewelry and it looks like a little prize in a cereal box. The perfect little treasure. And that's it. Box opened, job done. So I'd love to scratch the surface of your influencing here. As you know, we're determining our first ever influencer laureate tonight. What an honor. What an honor that would be. Can you talk to us about what you're thinking and feeling when you're doing your unboxing videos? What goes through your head? Absolutely. I like to think of the unboxing experience in terms of how it compares to shopping in a brick and mortar store. Do I feel immersed in the box? Do I feel like a valued customer? Fascinating. And did someone send you those earrings or did you buy them for yourself? I bought them for myself, okay? Of course that's okay. And would you say you purchased most of the items that you unbox? Fine. Yes, I buy everything myself. That makes sense since your whole routine. No one has ever bought me anything. <laughs> this was really meant to be a thoughtful interview. I don't think this is the right thing. Normally unboxers get sent things all the time. Once you get famous, people just start sending you stuff to open. Without me, everything I've opened is something I've ordered myself. I see. I am very famous and influential. If someone did send me a box, I would say their name in my video. It would help them get followers, but no one does. Well, what about in college? Didn't your parents ever send you a care package? All the other students got them from their mommies and daddies, but did I? No, never. I can see how that would be. Do you know how hard it is to be an unboxer who never gets gifts? I send people things all the time. Why don't they reciprocate? Am I not worthy of their love? I'm sure you're worthy of love. One time I climbed into the back of my postal worker's truck because I just couldn't believe nobody had any mail for me. But they didn't. And I know what you're thinking. Threatening a mail carrier is a federal offense? You're thinking, why don't you steal somebody else's mail and pretend it's yours? I was not thinking that. That would violate my user agreement and a promise I made to my fans that I would never steal mail again. Not this time. Wait, does that mean you did steal mail? Look. You don't know how hard it is to open package after package you sent to yourself. It's relentless, it's expensive, it's demoralizing. 
Why don't you stop? Stop. Stop what? Stop unboxing? It's all I have! I'm so lonely! Okay, okay. I'm sorry, but I think you're trying to- Please, anyone send me a box! I'll even take it from you, lonely PBS chick! As a journalist, I can't be- involved. Please, please, I live in 421 Forbes Lane. Okay, I'm sorry, Indiana, but we need to please. move on. Thank you, Melody Sweezel. Well, this has been a fascinating look at one of our nation's top influencers. What an interesting field, unboxing. Not quite as complex as, say, writing poetry, but it's definitely a niche. Right, Leslie? Hello, hello. Thank you both so much for coming to my podcast, Cackling with Jacqueline, where I interview the nation's top influencers. I think you may be turned around. We would actually like to welcome you to our show. Ooh, awkward, but no, you are 100% on my show. I have you booked right after the singing dentist. You may want to check your notes again. We are, for better or worse, giving you broadcast time on our show, on PBS, to determine the Influencer Laureate. I have here that I am interviewing two uptight gas bags that are presenting me with an award. I suppose anybody that uses more than 280 characters to express themselves is considered that in your book. Also, you haven't won anything yet, and it's not an award. It's the most distinguished cultural position in the nation one can attain. Nice try, guys. Everybody knows nothing is more illustrious than the Webbies. And even if we were presenting you with an award, why would you interview us? It's what I do. I'm an interviewer, not an interviewee. Jacqueline doesn't answer to anybody. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but in this instance, we are Look, doing- I respect and appreciate the work of my fellow interviewers. Journalists. But for the sake of both our shows, let's get on with this, shall we? Now, when did you first get the idea to interview me? Our boss told us to. Okay, we'll take turns. So, did you formally study podcasting? I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Vicks Vapor Rub. The only remedy when your cackle starts to crackle. What? No! We don't have corporate sponsors! This is PBS! <clears throat> Jacqueline, please excuse us. Can I have a moment alone with my colleague, please? Go ahead, but make it quick. At this point, I'll never start cackling. What's going on? Let's go ahead and make her think she's interviewing us while we're interviewing her. How? We'll just answer every one of her questions by asking one of our own. All right, Jacqueline, apologies for the interruption. Highly unusual, but Jacqueline just keeps on tackling problems. Okay, so what would you like to ask us? Well, let's get some background info here. When did you first get started in interviewism? Well, we've probably been in it far longer than you have. Which is how long exactly? Oh, me? Well, I started in high school with uh, my podcast, Skipping and Trippin', where I would interview all the stoner kids. And then in college, I moved to some on-camera stuff with my YouTube channel, Refreshing and Questioning. And then that eventually became into this. But going back to you, my guests, how did it feel when you finally got a job? But it was on the most boring network on TV. When you say boring, could you help us understand what you mean by explaining what you think would be entertaining? 
for instance, your show. Do you really not know the difference between entertaining and boring? What if we don't? If you don't, isn't it also possible that you don't know who is really interviewing who? Is it even really an interview if no one is giving any answers? Why are you dodging all my questions? Don't we call it pivoting in journalism? What does pivot even mean? How do you call yourself an interviewer? If I'm not an interviewer, why am I getting this award? It's not an award! Gotcha! You win! <laughs> well, folks, that's all the time we have here on Cackling with Jacqueline. Let's have a hand for our tricky, tricky guest who once again reaffirmed why I am getting this award. It just, it just came out of nowhere. What? I accidentally had my volume turned all the way up. I really wasn't expecting that. I think my ears are bleeding. Okay, why don't you sit this next one out? No, no, I'm doing it. My next guest is a fashion influencer who... Hello? We're on the air. I don't know. I think the guy's going on the air. Just one moment, viewers at home. I'm told this may be the thing. Okay, so it looks like there's a stopwatch, so there must be some kind of time element involved here. If you're just joining us, it turns out what we're watching is the worst thing I've ever seen. Hats! What was with the sunglasses? What was with the everything? Who's next? Well, uh, I'm going to be honest. I got a little confused, and I stopped reading my interview prep before I got to the section about our next guest. So I don't really know what they're famous for. Just ask them the questions on your note cards. These are questions for a poet laureate. Who cares? This is so stupid. Fair. Hello. Uh. Um, apron. Kitchen, you must be a chef. That one was a gimme. Yeah. Why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Uh, all right. Uh, I'm Sam Williams, but uh, you might know me as the Lightning Chef. <laughs> uh, I call my channel that because I... I help families whip up meals uh, faster than lightning. I'm, I'm also famous for my outreach in food deserts and feeding the hungry. I help people get healthy food to nourish your families. Huh. That's admirable. So I guess my question is, what poet has had the biggest influence on your work? Po poet. Oh. Okay. Uh, I, I guess.
guess I'd have to go with Walt Whitman. I don't know. I feel like Whitman wasn't really restrained by verse, and I don't really feel restrained by my recipes when I cook. You know, everything's to taste. Hmm. That's a solid answer. Okay, our next question is, in what room do you find yourself most productive? <laughs> the kitchen. Uh, seems like a no-brainer. Okay, I've, I've got one. Take us step-by-step step through the development of a poem. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I feel like all creation starts with a moment of inspiration and then exploration, trying to figure out what that idea is really about. That's the hardest part. Uh, and then you edit it, rework, hone, and finally acceptance. You know, realizing that the poem you're putting out is good enough to show the rest of the world. Huh. I, this is honestly working out better than I could have thought. You know, maybe I should never prep for interviews. I, I gotta be honest. I'm, I'm like loving these questions. You know, people usually ask me the same thing. But like, I mean, people have you fed or, or do you put nuts in your brownies? This is, yeah. Well, we have time for one last question. Read us the last thing you wrote. You got it. <clears throat> Pre heat oven to three fifty. A 13 by 9 pan, grease, and flour, flour, flour. Cream, butter, and sugar, lightly beat, 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 egg. Combine, combine, combine. That was way more poetic than I thought it was going to be. I'm the lightning chef, everyone. Please join me in welcoming our next guest from the realm of beauty, Tony Gloss. Thank you guys so much for having me. So blessed, so blessed. <laughs> so, Tony, you are a makeup tutorialist. Tell us what that means. Of, of course. So I show vids to peeps applying makes. For anyone out there who doesn't know, peeps is short for people and makes is short for makeup. Yeah. Anyone who's seen my vids knows that. Right, but in case there's anyone out there who hasn't. If there's anyone out there who still hasn't seen my videos, I pity them. But it, it's totally unlikely. I'm super pop. Yiller. Popular is what she means. So, Tony, you have pioneered a technique called no makeup makeup. Yeah, no makes makes. It's more than a makeup philosophy, it's a way of life. Like right now, it probably looks like I'm not wearing anything when really I've applied, oh, dropped my falsies, but I've applied falsies, mascara, lipstick, eyeliner, foundation, blush, and more. That's a lot and, and this is high definition, so it's crazy that it doesn't look like you're wearing any makeup at all. It is a lot. Um, so, Tony, 
Do you think you could show us how to apply no makeup makeup? Absolutely. No makes makes. I'm not calling it that. So we're going to start with my go-to foundation. This is Liquid Shimmer Matte Base. It's my favorite because it's 800 SPF, but it still goes on super thin. I mean, I can barely tell you're wearing it. So this is what you mean by no makeup makeup? No, this is just step one. All right, for step two, this is Eradicate Makeup Remover by SARS. It's gonna get off pretty much everything you have on. It gets all the way down to your pores. But why would you, you're wiping off everything you just put on? Yeah, no makes makes. So, you're back to wearing nothing. Listen, if Lady Macbeth had some eradicate makeup remover by SARS, she would have totally gotten away with murder. It stings, actually. That's how you know it's working. So you're wearing no makeup? Yeah, no makes makes. So, you are a makeup tutorialist. Who doesn't wear makeup? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to need a second. Okay, look, I don't think you're getting it. Okay, if foundation isn't your thing, there's a lot more on my channel. Like, let's say there's a super special occasion, you might wanna sport a bold lip. I know I often will. So you're gonna start with moist lips. And then add a clean line of lip pencil, sharpened. Okay, and now add the bold lip. This is Shock and All by Butterface. A, that actually looks pretty good. Thanks, I love this color. And now, you're gonna want this to stay on all day, so I recommend a setting spray. This is formaldehyde. And there you have it. And now for the final step. This is Forgotten by Dementia. No, you're just... Ooh. So, you just wipe the lip. Okay, um, that is all the time we have today. This was Tony Gloss, creator of the channel No Makeup Makeup, and a pointless piece of garbage who does absolutely nothing. Nothing! Winnie, you, you take it from here. I'm going to need a second, please. Leslie? <clears throat> Leslie, your camera's still on. You're muted. My apologies, America. My temper got the better of me there. Quite all right, Leslie. I stopped caring about this 20 minutes ago. <sighs> Our next guest is the most popular political influencer on YouTube. Politics! Finally! Is it someone we know? Is it Gwen Eiffel? Marlayson? <gasps> that rake Stephanopoulos? It says our guest is most famous for his conspiracy theories. Wait, that's a ludicrous and dangerous thing to be famous for. 
Why are we giving this person a platform? We could be discussing irregular rhyme structures and whether blank verse or free verse is more expressive. That's a fascinating question. And I think it's blank verse. Huh, you're mad. It's definitely free verse. America, why can't you just vote for a poet? Yeah, just write an RF. They'd be a great poet laureate. Forget all of this influencer rubbish. Hi, thank you both so much for having me on your show. When do we go live? We're actually live right now. Typical move by the media. Gotcha, journalism. I'm ready for you. Bring it on! Dear God. We are joined by Alex Patriot, internet famous conspiracy theorist. You're not better than me. My tax dollars pay for your public broadcasting salary. So jokes on you, I don't pay taxes. The note cards my producer gave me say your most famous for your Oreo conspiracy. Oh yeah, prepare to get red pill. Or as the merch I sell online says, the truth will set you freedom. What the hell does that mean? The truth will set you freedom? That makes no grammatical sense. Well, buckle up, because I don't follow the rules of grammar any more than I follow the rules of the road. I'm a danger to myself and others. See this? Crisp chocolate cookie. Creamy white filling. Think this looks like a sweet, simple snack? Wrong. I'm sure they taste good. But what do you think gives Oreo cookies that special? Next level, can't eat just one taste. Are you pausing because you think we're going to interact with you? More not. I don't even have my volume on. Because Oreo cookies are made of puppies. Think about it. Puppies are the best thing in the whole world. They make you feel all warm and fuzzy. Like for a fleeting moment, you can actually empathize with another living being. What else makes you feel all warm and fuzzy? Like for a fleeting moment, maybe the world isn't garbage and maybe your mom actually loves you even though she moved to Albuquerque with Ted. Oreo cookies. Hence, they must be made of puppies. I'm sorry I had to be the one to tell you, but I'm actually not sorry because I love what I do. I open eyes. Okay, I turned my volume on for one second. What you're saying is patently, provably false. Oreos list their ingredients right on the package. They're made of sugar, flour, hyaluronic canola oil, cocoa. Bah, 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 little sheep woman. That's where you're wrong. Actually made of puppies. Okay, well, I went to an Oreo factory and we watched them making the cookies and then we ate them. Ah, that was a deep fake. I was there. You must be in on it. You, the FDA, the FBI, my mom, you're all part of the cover up. I assure you, I'm not part of a cover up. Oreo cookies are made of puppies. Oreo cookies are made of puppies. If you dunk them, the puppies will come out in the milk. Okay, that is an outrageous claim. We can dunk them right here and prove you wrong. <laughs> you ready? Oreo. Milk. Wow. Not if you do it like that. Anyways, that doesn't prove me wrong. I believe it, so it's a fact. That's not how facts work. Oh, you should know, working for PBS, the network of facts. Why are you putting those in quotes? I really do work for PBS. Everyone knows PBS was invented by 5G as a way to control our minds. That's absurd. PBS has been around since the 60s, and 5G is a new technology. Those are facts. Come on, man, don't be such a sucker for the facts. You need to wake up. Brr, I'm your alarm clock. Time to wake up. Okay, I think we've heard enough. 
do I really have to connect the dots for you, you little lambs? All circles back to the puppies in 5G. Oreos, puppies. Think about it. Well, I think America has decided whether or not to vote you for Influencer Laureate. And cut. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. That was so much fun. Did you guys have fun? Okay, that was Alex Patriot. And it looks like Alex's channel got 3 million more followers during the course of this interview. Awesome. I, I'm not sure I can take much more of this. That last one was supposed to be our political influencer. What's political about Oreos? America, why are you watching these people? Why are you thumbing your buttons for them? Well, fortunately, that was our last guest. Oh, thank God. Well, America, it's time to do what 55.5% of you did in the 2016 general election. Exercise your constitutional right to vote. To recap, you are voting for one of these 10 ignoramuses to be America's first ever influencer laureate. Yeah, those words do not sound good together. And they never will, Leslie. Vote now, America, and we'll have your results shortly. I wonder who they'll pick. Please, for the love of all that is holy, do not vote for any of these knuckleheads! America, there's still time. You can write in a real artist. Write in Ara. Oh, who are we kidding? Of course, one of these dimwits is going to be elevated to laureate. You know what? I don't care anymore. You all deserve each other. Well, it looks like the results are in. The person America has chosen to be her influencer laureate is... RF William. Wait, what? Oh, thank God! There is a God! The right person won! They listened to us. They wrote an RF. Art is one that poetry is still king. Can you believe it, RF? No, this is such a surprise. RF, would you be so kind as to favor us with one of your brilliant poems? Oh, absolutely. Do, 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 da, da, poop, droop, ya, ya, ya. Roses are red, violets are blue, but they're not blue. More of a purple, no? Da. Da, da. Gaming is as gaming does. The truth will set you freedom. That was the worst poem I've ever heard. Yeah, the singing dentist would have been better than this. Get off our show. Get out of here. Ah! Well, America, you have let us down again. You somehow found the most ridiculous person to honor as your influencer laureate. Uh, we still have two minutes before the end of this broadcast. Who cares? Ended early. Cut the feed.
It was the best, only 22 people watching anyway.